Okay, this is our lesson on 7.5. We're going to be talking about trapezoids and kites. All of chapter 7, we've been talking about all these different types of quadrilaterals. We started out with parallelograms, and then we talked about rhombuses and rectangles and squares. And today we're going to cover this other set of quadrilaterals, the trapezoids, the isosceles trapezoids, and the kites. So we'll start with the trapezoid. And a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And those parallel sides we call the bases. Now I will tell you that some books have a slightly different definition of a trapezoid, um, but this is the one that we'll be using, which is exactly one pair of parallel sides, which means that a parallelogram, since it has two pairs of parallel sides, a parallelogram would not be a trapezoid. The trapezoids only have one set of parallel sides. Now, the two sides that are not parallel, those are called the legs. So the legs connect the two bases together. Now we have these angles that are called base angles. So the base angles of a trapezoid are two consecutive angles whose common side is a base. So I think that definition is a little weird to say, I'm a little weird to read. So if you think about this base, the base angles are the angles that this base connects. So that's gonna be angle A and angle D. That's a pair of base angles. And then if we look at the top base up here, this BC, that base connects angle B to angle C. So angle B and angle C are a pair of base angles. So we have two bases, we have two legs, and then we have two sets of base angles. Now, an isosceles trapezoid is a special kind of trapezoid where the legs are congruent. You see that this leg is congruent to this leg. And then we learn a, some special things about isosceles trapezoids. We have several different things. Um, but first, if we want to identify a trapezoid in the coordinate plane. What we need to know in order for it to be a trapezoid is for it to have one set of parallel bases. So we can tell looking here, ah, we can tell looking that RS should be parallel to OT. So what we wanna do is we want to look at the slope of RS and the slope of OT. So the slope of our s, well the rise is 1 and the run is 2, so the slope of our s is 1 half. Ooh, that was pretty. And then we want to look at the slope of ot, and the rise is 2 and the run is 4, so that's a slope of 2 fourths, which is also 1 half. So we know that our s is parallel to ot, so it's definitely a trapezoid. Now when it comes to isosceles trapezoids, we have three different theorems. The first thing is, if the trapezoid is isosceles, so if those two legs are congruent, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So you can see angle A is congruent to angle D, and you can also see that angle B is congruent to angle C. So if it's an isosceles trapezoid, then the base angles, each set of base angles, is congruent. The second theorem says if a trapezoid has a pair of congruent base angles, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So this is the converse of this one. If I know that angle D is congruent to angle A, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So A, B, and C, D are going to be the same length. And then the last thing is, if the trapezoid is isosceles, if we already know that, then the diagonals are congruent. So AC would be congruent to BD. So here's an example. This is two different examples. If EG is equal to FH, so EG is this one, 
is equal to FH is an isosceles trapezoid. Well, let's go back a second because I read this one and I skipped a p part of the statement. It says if and only if. So if and only if means this statement works both ways. If it's isosceles, then the diagonals are congruent, but also if the diagonals are congruent, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So if this, then this, and if this, then this. So since they're telling us here that EG is equal to FH, yes, we know it's an isosceles trapezoid because of the isosceles trapezoid diagonals theorem. The second question says, if the measure of HEF is 70 degrees, so HEF is this angle right in here, if it's 70 degrees and F GH is equal to 110, is it an isosceles trapezoid? So we have to think back to those parallel line theorems that you learned with book one. These two lines are parallel, and so we have a transversal coming through right here. Well, if those lines are parallel, then what do you know about same side interior or co-interior angles? Well, the co-interior angles are supplementary. So if angle E is 70, then angle F H is 110. And we have the same thing on the other side. We have a transversal here. So angle G and angle F are also supplementary. So if G is 110, then F is 70. And since we see that these two angles are the same, and we see that these two angles are the same, then it is an isosceles trapezoid because it has two sets of base angles that are congruent. Okay, one more thing about trapezoids, and that's the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. This is gonna look very familiar because it looks just like the triangle mid-segment theorem. So if M and N are the midpoints of those two sides, then MN is parallel to both of the bases. And then we also know that MN is half of the sum of those two bases. So if you add the two bases together and divide by two, that will give you the length of MN. This looks a lot like the formula for area of a trapezoid. It's not the formula because it doesn't have the height included, but it's very similar. So in this example, we're wanting to find the length of MN. And we can see that it's the mid-segment because these two are the same length and these two are the same length. So we can find MN by taking half of PQ plus SR. So MN is half of, well PQ is, has a length of 12, SR has a length of 28. So 12 plus 28 is 40, and half of 40 is 20. So MN has a length of 20. Now here we're given our mid-segment on a coordinate grid, and they're asking us to find the length of YZ. Well, we can do that one of two ways. We can either find the length of VS and TU and use the formula we just learned, or since it's on a coordinate grid, we can go ahead and just make a right triangle here and use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, they didn't give us the ordered pairs for Y and Z, so we need to find them. They're the midpoints. So Y is going to be the midpoint of ST. So 0 plus 8 divided by 2 and 6 plus 10. 6 plus 10 divided by 2, which means Y is the ordered pair 4, 8. So I'm going to label that on here, 4, 8. And then Z 
is the midpoint of VU, so 2 plus 12 divided by 2, and 2 plus 2 divided by 2. So it's the point 7, 2. You'll notice on this one that the scale is really counting by twos. So we want to be careful when we're looking at a grid that we pay attention to the scale. So if we go back to looking at that triangle for YZ, there's Y and there's Z, this leg has a length of 3 because it goes from 7 to 4 or from 4 to 7. And this leg has a length of 6. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find yz, 6 squared plus 3 squared. So it's the square root of 45. If we wanted to simplify the square root of 45, since it has a perfect square of 9 in it, we could say that it is 3 times the square root of 5. Either one of these answers would be fine. Um, when you do your homework in Big Ideas Math, I'm not sure if they're going to want the simplified version or the regular version. Um, so you may need to test both and see which kind of answer they want. Okay, so that's the end of trapezoids. We just have a little bit to talk about kites. So a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So that means the sides that are congruent actually share an endpoint. So here we have these two sides that are congruent and we have these two sides that are congruent. That's what makes it a kite. And a kite has two really important special things and the first is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So you're going to see that BD and AC meet at a right angle. And the other thing that's important to know about kites is that you have one set of opposite angles that are congruent. And it's always going to be the set that has two different sides. Okay, so we have AB and AD they form angle A and it's congruent to angle C. Okay, so in this one example for kites I've given you, you have that this large angle on this end is 120 and on this end it's 40. Well since it's a quadrilateral, you know quadrilaterals have an angle sum of 360 degrees. So I'm going to subtract off the 120 degrees and I'm going to subtract off the 40 degrees, which gives me 200 degrees. But since I know that this angle and this angle are congruent, each one of them must be 100 degrees. So this angle is 100 degrees, and this angle is 100 degrees. And that's, that's all there is.